Welcome to Utah Explored. Join us on a guided tour as we take you across the state to explore Utah's most amazing places, unique attractions, destinations off the beaten path, while learning all about the culture, history, and one-of-a-kind activities that you can only experience here in Utah. On each episode, we meet locals, guides, tourism professionals, and organizations across the state as they show us what they love about Utah, what there is to do in the area, how to visit these locations, and as always, discuss what we can do to protect these great places we all love for future visitors. Coming up on this episode of Utah Explored, we'll stand on the edge of a 2,000-foot cliff overlooking the Colorado River at Dead Horse State Park. Then we'll join five friends as they embark on a 10-day journey on the incredible Uinta Highline Trail in northern Utah. Explore unique off-the-beaten-path destinations near Moab. Then discover amazing art hidden in plain sight near the Great Salt Lake. And finally, We'll learn about dirt biking and what brought two friends together as they ride amongst the Mars-like landscape in an area known as Utah's Badlands. So grab some trail mix and put some air in your tires as we head out on a journey spanning the entire state on this episode of Utah Explored. Moab, Utah is a destination that draws people from all over the world. It's known as the ultimate base camp for adventure. Here is one place near Moab you cannot miss. Dead Horse Point State Park offers unbelievable scenic vistas, mountain biking trails, and cliffside hiking trails that will get your adrenaline pumping. My name is Spencer Stokes, and I am the park ranger naturalist here at Dead Horse Point State Park. So my role is to help educate the public on the natural resources of the park, help maintain trails, keep facilities clean, keep the campground clean, so that way people can come here and experience wilderness in its true form. Currently we're up here at Dead Horse State Park, which is definitely one of the most beautiful and kind of good for the whole family places. Dead Horse Point has extreme visual significance. And these county commissioners realize it's such an important place that they bought it and donated it to Utah State Parks. And that's how the park was established in 1959. And this area really is the picture-perfect form of the Wild West. So the ecosystem here at Dead Horse Point is one of harsh extremes. We are classified as a desert, and because of that, plants and animals here are adapted to a very harsh lifestyle, and one person can make quite an impact. So if they're getting off trail, if they're you know, carving their name in trees, or disturbing wildlife, um, it can really drastically change the ecosystem you know, if you stay on the trails, you're going to see everything. You're not missing anything. They put the trails where all the pretty stuff is. Treat everything like it's a golf course, because when we get like, you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people up here, you can only imagine what the trails look like when people don't respect the stuff, so. We are very close to Canyonlands National Park. Arches is just right down the road from us. It's about 35 minutes away. And the Moab itself is only about a 40 minute drive. So we, if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle and crowds and hotels and Moab and have a, uh, a more low-key camping experience, come stay here. This is a good place to really kind of have your first day in Moab, especially if you're going to spend four or five, six days here. So one of the other best reasons to camp here and stay overnight at Dead Horse Point State Park is that when you stay here, you have access 24-7 to the park, which means you could experience our amazing night skies. I've had more people from cities come up here and tell me they've never heard silence before. We have some of the best campgrounds in the Moab area. We have sites that can accommodate all different sizes of trailers and all different camping needs. And then we also have nine yurts, and these yurts are fantastic. Um, they sleep up to six people and they provide a great base camp, especially for mountain bikers because half of these yurts are located right next to trailheads for mountain biking. So the mountain biking um, found in this park is some of the best you're going to find in Utah. Dead Horse State Park went from one of the least visited state parks to one of the most visited state parks in Utah in like a six year period because of the mountain bike trail. 
You have the original Intrepids over here. You've got Big Chief. You've got um, Raven Roll. Those are all really, really good family-friendly trails. And if you're starting off, you know, your trip mountain biking, you kind of get your bearings through the desert. You can bring family members up here who maybe aren't really into biking and they can do short loops that are smooth. They can go on hikes and see beautiful views, some of the best views you'll ever see. So we're out here hiking and we're on part of our trail system. You get to see these beautiful views, um, experience some of the amazing nature. So get out here and enjoy it. Every mile, there's just a beautiful overlook where you can walk out about 100 yards and just take some of the most beautiful photos you'll ever see in your entire life. So here we are, and you'll see something that really doesn't fit. Bright blue ponds. So we get all sorts of questions, what are these ponds? These are solar evaporation ponds. This mining company is pumping water down this rock layer beneath the canyon that we can't see that has this mineral in it called potash. And this potash is used for fertilizer, for ice melt, and for a variety of other different reasons. So this area wouldn't be nearly as unique as it is without the Colorado River. This river has been a lifeline for people in this area for thousands of years. It's carved the canyons here, it's carved the Grand Canyon, and it continues to carve this area and will change it as long as the river continues to run for the next million years as it has been before. You can see how it's carved these canyons and left this amazing scene for us to enjoy. So I invite you to get here to Dead Horse Point State Park and see one of the simply most amazing sights that you will never forget. And the experiences and adventures that can be had here are really second to none. And so when you come here to Dead Horse Point State Park, just know that you are really going to experience an adventure that will be second to none that you've had before. In my personal opinion, Dead Horse is going to be probably the best place that you could start your trip here in Moab because if you like being outside, there's no way that you couldn't spend a couple of days up here being happy. Where else can you watch the sunset from the edge of a 2,000 foot cliff after a day of riding in the Moab area? Dead Horse Point State Park deserves to be on the top of your list when planning your next Utah adventure. For more information on how to plan your trip, visit www.stateparks.utah.gov. When someone says Moab, you think off-road adventures in Jeeps and ATVs, exploring the cliffside trails of Dead Horse State Park, and hiking through the iconic landscapes of Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. Today, we are going to show you the top five most unique things to see around Moab that lie just off the beaten tourism path. Number five on our list is the town of Thompson Springs. Although not technically a ghost town, the buildings along the main street look just like something you'd see in a Hollywood film. The once busy freeway and train station that have passed through this town are now long gone, leaving only the remnants of an old hotel, cafe, and several buildings. Number four is the iconic western landscapes of Castle Valley. Located 35 minutes northeast of Moab, you'll follow the Colorado River, where the landscape starts to reveal the monolithic mesas of the Castle Valley area. You'll feel like you've stepped into an old western movie. And for good reason. Many classic films and TV shows have been filmed in this area. We are going way back in time with number three on our list, the Mill Creek Dinosaur Track Site. Just 15 miles north of Moab, you can take a self-guided walking tour that will transport you back to the Jurassic period over 150 million years ago. Please remember, it's illegal to deface, destroy improvements to the trails, or remove any rocks or fossils from the area. Number two on our list is the Potash Road Petroglyph Viewing Area, located just minutes north of Moab along the Colorado River. Among the many designs, you will see portrayals of animals, triangular figures with horns, shields, spears, and one incredible large petroglyph that depicts what appears to be several people hunting a large bear. You'll be amazed by this ancient art. Coming in at number one on our list of the most unique things to see around Moab,
Corona Arch. Also on Potash Road, north of Moab, this fantastic arch is consistently rated as one of the best short hikes in the Moab area. Visitors hike three miles round trip from the parking area, across slick rock, and even use a ladder bolted into the rock, steps cut into sandstone, and cables to aid them through steep sections of the trail. This adventurous trail reaches its end as you find yourself standing beneath a large freestanding sandstone bridge known as Corona Arch. Amazing views and the fun unique trail leading to this arch makes it easy to see why Corona Arch is number one on our list of the most unique off the beaten path things to see around Moab. High in the Uinta Mountains, there is a trail that traverses 104 miles of expansive alpine landscapes. Hikers from all over the world make the journey known as the Highline Trail. We join five friends as they embark on a 10-day journey on this incredible trail in northern Utah. Along the way, we learn more about these hikers and how the time they've spent on this trail has enhanced the rest of their lives. The Uinta Highline Trail traverses about 104 miles along the backbone of the Uinta Mountains. The eastern terminus is in McKee Draw, which is located on the Ashley National Forest, and the western terminus is over by Hayden Peak, Hayden Pass area near the Mare Lake Highway. This was identified early on as a unique place. We have a unique topography. We have a mountain range that's unique in its linear structure going east to west. The geology, the history, and its importance to the expansion of the west even in 1935, it was identified as unique enough to be set aside as a primitive area. Today, we are climbing up to Anderson Pass, the highest point on the Highline Trail, and then we are gonna take an offshoot up to Kings Peak, the highest point in Utah. So we'll see, we're gonna be about, man, I think 3,000 feet higher than we are right now. So it's gonna be pretty crazy up there, I'm excited. I really am not crazy about climbing 700 feet straight up, but peer pressure got the best of me, and I will be making that climb. Today's gonna be awesome. We're gonna go really high and pass out because we're gonna not have a lot of oxygen. And then we're gonna hold up a sign that says King's Peak, and then we're gonna like do crazy faces like, ah! You went down! Now my throat hurts. You in town! This was our big day. This was a day that we were looking forward to, but we were also a little nervous and apprehensive about because we knew we were gonna be doing a lot of climbing. We weren't doing huge miles on this hike. We were only really doing anywhere from eight to 12. So that wasn't a big deal. But being above 10,000 feet in elevation, a 3,000 foot climb just feels so much harder. We started making our way to Anderson Pass. It took a while, we meandered and switched back, and we finally got there, and it was the first pass that when you got to the top, it was like dropping off a cliff on the other side, just a big, expansive valley. So we could already feel it. We could feel the elevation, but the views were just unbelievable. We put our packs off to the side on some rocks and just start going up this peak. All of a sudden, the trail disappears. The side trail to King's Peak should not be called a side trail to anywhere because it is not a trail. It is simply giant rocks for 700 vertical feet all the way to the top. I've never seen a mountain like this before. It was just a pile of rocks, rocks that are about anywhere from the size of a coffee table to the size of a car. And you have to just kind of hop from rock to rock and just hope that you don't fall. I don't think anybody really expected it to be as difficult as it actually was. Some parts of it, we were actually going hand over hand. And it just kept going up and up and up. 
and I complained the entire way. I yelled at everybody. I was mad. I was like, why are you making me do this? You said I was going to have cell phone service halfway up this mountain. It's the only reason I'm coming up this mountain so I can call my girlfriend. Was there cell phone service? No, there was no cell phone service. It is completely rewarding being up here and doing it with these guys makes it all that much better. These guys let me tag along. I feel pretty grateful and lucky for that. It was a good time. And here we are. High's Point, Utah. Here's to Utah. It's one of the reasons why I hike, is for those moments. And it was a moment that I'm not going to forget. The thing that really means the most to me in life are my relationships. Because you can't buy them, you can't fake them. You have to earn them through shared experiences. I can be in the country, I can be in the woods, I can be in the city, and enjoy myself no matter where I am. I guess what's most important is who I'm with. Learn more about the personal discoveries, experiences, and challenges these five friends had while on their 10-day journey hiking the Uinta Highline Trail by watching their documentary film, Highline. Get more information on how to watch the film on their website, outmersivefilms.com. The world-famous Great Salt Lake is the largest saltwater lake in the Western Hemisphere and is the largest remnant of Lake Bonneville, a prehistoric pluvial lake. Sometimes described as America's Dead Sea, this area has also called out to artists who, inspired by the lake and surrounding areas, have created world-famous works of art along its salty shores. Driving down Interstate 80 along the salt flats, motorists begin to see a strange structure looming out of the salt-encrusted earth. This 87-foot-tall, alien-looking tree is known as Metaphor, the Tree of Utah, and was created by the Swedish artist Carl Moman in the 1980s. It is said that this unique work of art, located on a desolate roadside in the Salt Lake Desert, was created by Moman after he had a vision of a tree while driving the same stretch of desolate highway. Just outside the ghost town of Lucen, Utah, and not far from the salty waters of the Great Salt Lake, lies a unique work of art built out of concrete, known as the famous Sun Tunnels. Created by Nancy Holt, an American artist known for her land art, the Sun Tunnels represent her interest in the variation of intensity the sun has in the desert. Each of these tunnels react differently with the sunlight when aligned with sunrise or sunset during the summer or winter solstice. On the northeastern shoreline of the Great Salt Lake lies a massive 1,500-foot-long counterclockwise coil jutting out from the shore of the lake. This famous piece of landscape art, known as an earthwork, is called the Spiral Jetty, created by artist Robert Smithson. It's considered to be one of the most important pieces of art created during his career. Smithson reportedly chose this site because of the blood-red color of the water caused by the presence of salt-tolerant bacteria and algae that thrive at this location. The contrast of this red water and the remote location allows for the work of art to visually stand out for miles around. The spiral jetty has become an iconic piece of art known around the world. Whether you're inspired by the man-made artwork that can be found hidden around the Great Salt Lake or simply engaged by the beautiful compositions created by Mother Nature, the Great Salt Lake and its surrounding areas offer unique and surreal experiences that you will not want to miss. As always, when visiting, take only photographs and leave only your footprints behind you. Keeping these places accessible to everyone is important, and practicing respectful visitation is a great way of ensuring access for future visitors.
Utah is home to some of the best off-highway motorcycle riding destinations in the West. Those who ride dirt bikes crave the thrill and freedom of being out on the track, all while understanding why safety and responsible riding is important to the future of the sport. I think probably the first time I remember it hooking me was just watching my dad racing and that was just, oh, I wanted to do that so bad. He told me as soon as I could ride without training wheels, I could. My name is Garrett Paul. Uh, my name is Sam Anderson. I met Garrett at the races. We've been buddies ever since, riding every single weekend. I started riding motorcycles when I was around eight years old. And when I turned about 16, I started coming out to the motocross track here. Started racing and I've been getting faster and faster. I started getting bigger bikes, hitting bigger jumps. Can't get enough of it. So that's what all my money goes to is riding motorcycles. When I met Garrett at the races, we, uh, we kind of just meshed really good, been good ever since. And today we're out here riding at uh, Jordan River OHV Park. This is a great place to start because they have something that I think pretty much everybody can ride on. I mean, you got your white collar guys, your blue collar guys, and no matter what walk of life they come from, we all have dirt bikes in common. We all have that need for that throttle therapy. Calm down before you stress up the groove. The energy a little different when the blessings are cool. Hey, who you talking to? Just know I ain't no regular fool. Could be anything in the world, but I can never be you because I... In Utah, we have tons of different riding terrain. You can go from sand dunes to plateaus to motocross tracks, single track trails. Basically, any type of terrain you would want to ride, we have here in Utah. There's nothing like after a really hard week at work, like just pinning that throttle. It's so nice and it's so therapeutic. It's, I, you know, I would highly recommend it to anybody. It's always nice to go out and just adventure, just go exploring the hills and you always see different terrain. The tracks are really fun, but it's, it's the same jumps, the same corners. I mean, it's extremely technical, but when you get up into the trails, it's a whole different ball game. I feel like it's important to stay on designated routes just so we don't get those trails shut down. I mean, that's a great opportunity to be able to ride in those beautiful places and to have that shut down and, you know, not be able to ride those would just be awful. So we all have a responsibility to stay on the trail and just be respectful of the terrain and to preserve it for, you know, future generations to go and ride and appreciate. Swing arm is extremely unique. You got the duff, all sorts of crazy terrain. I mean, it's like riding on the moon. Riding just, it makes you feel free. When you're out on the track or up in the hills, it's just you and the machine. And when I'm working, all I can think about is getting on a dirt bike the next time. And while I'm riding, I never want to stop. It's turned into my life. It's very freeing. There's nothing better in the world than riding dirt bikes. You never know when something's going to happen. I mean, you really don't. I've walked away from some really big wrecks, but it's always been the really stupid ones that you wouldn't think anything would happen, but that's when you, the big injuries happen. Safety is number one for me. I always want to make it home to my family. So I'll spend more money on my equipment than I do on my bikes. I'll, I'll ride a tattered bike with no knobs on my tires. I'd rather spend all my money on helmet, solid boots, good knee, knee braces, and the equipment's mainly number one, and safety is always number one. It's basically you're spending what your life is worth. I feel like riding brings people together because you're, you're like a small niche community. Dirt bike person is really, they come from all walks of life. When we go to the races, I could, I could break my handlebars to a lever, get a flat, and there's always someone there. It doesn't matter if you've ever met them in your life, they're always willing to give you a shirt off their back to help you get going for that next moto. Man.
It takes so much mental capacity when you're doing it that it really forces everything else out of your mind in that moment. It's a very in the moment activity. It's so satisfying to um, progress at something and it's given me a lot of self-confidence over the years. I mean, I'm not the fastest guy on the track, but it's, it's really satisfying to nail a technique or nail a jump or even just watch your progression over the years. And um, there's just nothing out there like it. There's no other feeling. Utah has no shortage of places to enjoy off-road adventures. Just remember to follow all rules and regulations. For more information about off-highway vehicles, places to ride, and to learn more about the 50th anniversary of the Utah OHV program, visit www.ohv.utah.gov. On this episode of Utah Explored, we took you on several amazing adventures across the state. We rode some of the best mountain biking trails along the towering cliffs of Dead Horse Point State Park and hiked the High Line Trail to the top of Kings Peak, the highest point in Utah. And finally, we took an adrenaline-filled ride on the tabletops and turns of the Jordan River Off-Highway Vehicle State Park while experiencing the unique terrain of Swing Arm City that attracts freestyle motocrossers from around the world, all while passing along the importance of respectful visitation and preserving these wonderful Utah places for future generations. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Utah Explored. Join us on the next episode to explore more amazing places, unique attractions, off the beaten path destinations, while learning all about the culture, history, and one-of-a-kind activities that you can only experience here in Utah. Get out there and explore, but as always, do so with respect. See what's on the next episode and watch previous episodes at utahexplored.com.